Good afternoon, everybody. Here we go again, start of the next chapter. Uh, this is chapter 8 in your textbook. We're calling this Unit 4 because this is the fourth thing that we've learned. It's photosynthesis, which you probably learned back in 7th grade, was that sunlight makes energy, but it doesn't really make energy. It makes food. Sunlight is the energy to help convert things into food. So when we learned about the cell last unit, and we talked about the chloroplast, and we noticed that there were some things inside of the chloroplast, well, we're going to get way too detailed about what's inside of a chloroplast and what's going on on the molecular level inside of that chloroplast. So um, we're going to start out simple. We're just going to start out the basic structure, some just basic introductions into what's going to go into the whole process of photosynthesis, okay? So not too much today. We'll see. Meh. Okay. The basics. If you learn nothing from this unit except one thing, it needs to be that. Okay? I don't care which one of these goes first, carbon dioxide or water. I don't care which one of these go last, sugar or oxygen. I do care carbon dioxide and water are on the left. That's an arrow. It's supposed to be an arrow. And this is glucose, and oxygen should be on the right. I do care that all these little numbers in there are correct. And I also care that you remember these numbers in the front. Okay? That is the equation for photosynthesis. Basically, what that's attempting to tell you is that it takes six molecules of carbon dioxide, the stuff that we breathe out, and six molecules of water to make one molecule of glucose, C6H12O6, and six molecules of oxygen. So for every six of these we breathe out, a plant can turn it into six of these for us to breathe in. For every six of these a plant takes in, it makes one of these for us to eat. And then this is why we water our plants, to make this happen. Okay? So, in words, this thing right here in words that's this is me saying what this states so six carbon dioxides plus six waters produce this little arrow means produce can also mean yield one glucose and six oxygens okay you got to got to know that and I'm not gonna have you match it I'm gonna say what is the equation for photosynthesis and you gotta rattle out from your brain okay all right and you need to know where it happens. The whole reason why plants are green is because it occurs in the chloroplasts of something called an autotroph. Anytime you see that word troph, that means eat. Now auto, like autobiography, automobile, means yourself. Now it doesn't mean you eat yourself. It means the things you eat, you make yourself. We do not make our own food. Yes, we cook but we don't produce it by sitting out in the sun. So we are not autotrophs. We are what's called heterotrophs. Okay, so let's look at the words. So autotrophs, auto, all by yourself, troph, eat. So these are any organisms, organisms that can make their own food. For example, plants. Uh, actually I actually don't have a picture of a plant on here, so I shall draw one. Plant. <laughs> That's a plant, okay? Plants are autotrophs. They make their own food. Algae, like this weird looking creature right there, that makes its own food. It's an autotroph. Moss, that makes its own food. Certain bacteria make their own food. Not all bacteria, just special ones, make their own food. So if they can make their own food, which usually means they're green, then we call them an autotroph. We are not green. We do not make our own food. So we are called... We are called heterotrophs. Hetero, different. Troph, eat. I get my food from a different source. Okay? Heterotroph. Different food. Okay. So, who is the magical organelle that gets to do all this? Chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are amazing, right? They're little green things found inside of plant cells. Well, here's a whole bunch of plant cells, beautiful cells, I might say. And all these little green things in here are chloroplasts. Now, we normally draw them as being long and lima bean shaped. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they're round. Sometimes they're flat. 
It all depends on what plant it's in. So these are the organelles whose job it is to carry out photosynthesis. And it's not because of just them, but it's the fact that they contain something called pigment. Like in, in painting, a pigment is something that gives color to something else. And it does. Chlorophyll is the pigment that gives color to the plants. But it also is a big energy sponge, meaning it loves to soak up energy. So the pigment, chlorophyll, which we'll get to in just a second, is what makes chloroplasts and therefore plants green. These are pigments. Some examples of pigments. Pigment. Okay. First most important one, chlorophyll. Notice there's two kinds, A and B. So we have two types of chlorophyll. One's a kind of a dark, darker green, one's more of a lime, lighter green. But they both do the same job, is that they absorb light. And you guys all remember from grade school that light is made out of the colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and then violets, like right on the edge. Roy G. Biv, you know that. So all these colors are able to be absorbed by chlorophyll because color is a wavelength. So if you think of light coming to us as a wave, well, these the, in the red spectrum, these are big waves. Down here in the violet, little bitty teeny tiny waves. And so chlorophyll A and B, what they get to do is they absorb, and you can see the two green lines here, they absorb these wavelengths. So notice the blues, and then over here the oranges and the reds. Look at what they don't like. They do not like yellow and green light. So if you want to plant a garden and make it grow really, really well, don't put a green light bulb in to try to feed them. They're not going to grow that well. Okay? So they want these colors and these colors. But sunlight is a mixture of all these colors. So they absorb these guys. What do they do with these colors? They reflect them. So what happens is when sunlight comes down from the sun, the plant will absorb all the other colors, but it reflects greens and yellows, which is why plants are greens, because they don't absorb green wavelengths of light. They reflect it, and so they appear to be green. So chlorophyll, A and B, two major photosynthetic pigments that absorb violets and blues, that's down here, and reds and oranges down here. They don't absorb green, they reflect it. So what do I do about those other colors that I can't absorb? Well, there's other ones. Carotenoids, these are called accessory. Accessory pigments. An accessory pigment is a helper. And so this is something like carotenoids. Carotenoid sounds like carrot, carrot or orange. So if you notice, these are orange pigments. These are yellow-orange pigments that absorb violet, blues, and some of the greens. So not all that green light is wasted. Some of it gets absorbed over here. So if you notice, if you want to, cut, if you want to grow a plant really well, grow it with a blue uh, indigo lamp, and they'll grow really, really well. Or maybe even orange down here. But if you notice, this is where they absorb the majority of their pigments. So as you can see, Lots of different pigments, but the main one is chlorophyll A and B. Those are what make plants green. They absorb the most wavelengths and therefore the most energy of light. And uh, then we have accessory pigments that help. Carotenoids are not the only one. There's anthocyanins, which pick up blues and, or reflect the blues and purples. There's lots of different kinds. But for now, these are the only two you need to know. Okay, so what does a chloroplast look like? Well, it looks like a hollow jelly bean or a water bag water balloon with a stack of poker chips inside. And so the whole entire thing we know is called a chloroplast. A chloroplast is where photosynthesis occurs. Okay, we know that. It is made out of two membranes. If you remember from that packet, the nucleus and the um, mitochondria and the chloroplast were three organelles with double membranes. So you can see right here, double membranes. There's an outer layer and an inner layer. So there's two mem membranes. Okay, I said that like three times now, so it's kind of important, okay? Two membranes, inner and outer. And inside is this fluid that all of this stuff is floating around in. So it's like a, a gusher. You know that fluid inside of a gusher? Yeah, it's like that. 
gooey and thick and almost like cytoplasm but a little bit thicker so that's called the stroma and there goes my light again see what happens when i do these after school if i don't move my lights think i'm not here and they turn off and then you don't really get to see me oh darn so the stroma is the fluid that is found floating around inside of the chloroplast now what are the poker chips called these are called well let me go back to that other picture because it's got them labeled on here these are called thylakoids each individual little poker chip is called a thylakoid and a stack of poker chips is called a granum if I'm talking about one of them if I'm talking about all of them it's grana granum grana okay so now let's look at the next picture so they're not individual little poker chips if you notice they're not closed off from each other but see how it's an interconnected layer so from the outside it looks like a stack of poker chips but they're all connected on the inside and then there's these little bands that can connect them to each other so a thylakoid is just a stack of photosynthetic membranes that's all this stuff inside that contains chlorophyll in this layer right here where I'm putting all the polka dots that's where all the chlorophyll is found so the chlorophyll is in the chloroplast in the thylakoid membrane did you catch that let me say that again the chlorophyll is in the chlor the, the, blah. the chlorophyll is in the chloroplast in the thylakoid membrane okay so all these little polka dots have little bags of chlorophyll in them and if I have a stack of these guys I call it a grana or granum if I'm talking about one or more than one I don't care which one you use I'll be happy if you just get you know gran okay so grana granum is a stack of them okay that's it for today very simple I don't want to overwhelm you I will tell you whoops hit the microphone I will tell you um, this unit lots of small molecular details and chemical processes so you really have to practice this one okay so what do we need to know so let's go back okay we need to know all the structures of a chloroplast so the chloroplast stroma thylakoids grana double membrane we want to know about the two main types of pigments chlorophyll and carotenoids and what colors they absorb and what colors they reflect we know what a chlorophyll chloroplast I remember a hard time saying that today chloroplast should know what the word autotroph is what it means and some examples of them and what color most autotrophs are and then heterotroph this will come up more in the next chapter just know the difference between them and and the formula you got to know the formula okay so starting you out nice and simple today all right guys we will see you tomorrow we're going to do a little lab involving all the pigments found in plants okay guys see you later bye